Uh, you sent for me, old great factory lord? Yes, Commander. I have a mission for you. Uh, sure. I want you to travel to the 300,428th star of the Andromeda Galaxy. There, you will find a habitable planet with water and life. Prepare the planet for colonization at once. Oh, great. I'll go get my team together. No. All of your crew members have been reassigned to... Greasing my actuator joints. You will be going alone. Alone? What the... That'll, that'll take years. Well, I guess it won't be that bad, so long as I have all of the automated equipment set to deploy on landing. No, you will not be taking any automated equipment or research data with you. What? That's biter turds. Well, what equipment can I bring? A multi-tool. Huh? Wait, isn't, isn't that the bathroom buddy from the movie Gremlins? I don't- Silence! You must ensure the area is safe for landing. Preliminary reports indicate extremely hostile life forms. Okay, tell me I can at least bring a 30 watt plasma rifle and turrets. No, you may only bring the small, non-upgradable gun for your tiny little lady hands. Sir, um, are you mad at me? Maybe. Be gone! Ah, balls. Hi guys, this is Rob with Deluxe Gaming, and this is Factorio. Factorio is a game where you build and maintain factories, and it probably has the most outrageous premise for any strategy RTS than any other game I've ever played. As you just witnessed in the intro, you are, in fact, sent ahead of colonizers all by yourself with no equipment aside from a pistol, a few clips of ammunition, a couple steel plates, and of course, some mystical tool that allows you to craft just about anything. However, you may only construct items one at a time, and it's very time-consuming to build most things in Factorio. And building things is key to preparing this planet for its new visitors. So naturally, it makes sense to build machines to build things in quantity for you, specifically in the nature of items that will allow you to research new technologies that will eventually allow you the ultimate victory of crafting the almighty rocket defense turret that will protect the colonists while they land on their new home. The premise is ridiculous and at the same time awesome because it's ridiculous. So the bottom line is we get to build things so that we can research things so that we can destroy aliens and then build more things and then do more research, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's super crazy, amazing fun, and it's so addicting, and I can't stop playing. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start a brand new game. We're going to just start something generic. I, I've played a fair amount of this now, probably, I don't know, at least a few weeks worth. Uh, not all the time, I mean, I still work for a living, and I still make other YouTube videos, so I haven't spent that much time with it, and it's still gonna be a little bit of a learning process, but for the most part, I've played the first half of the game at least a couple dozen times. Now, the last half of the game, not so much. So that's where it's gonna get kinda weird and interesting for me because I'm gonna be learning a lot as it goes along. So the it has a full map generator. You can set you know everything to very low to very high. Of course, you can determine how much iron you're gonna have, how much oil you're gonna have, all the resources, right? Even how many enemies you're gonna have, whether or not they're gonna be peaceful or not, uh, as well as the size of the map, the richness of all of these veins of minerals, all of these things you can kind of make a little bit of a decision here. And you can even go in and, and actually set the actual width and height of the map that you're gonna be playing. So if you wanna do something kind of weird and different, you can set that up. You can set up a seed. In other words, I could type in a name or a number here. And then if I wanna go back and restart that map, or you could just save the game at the beginning and play it from the beginning again, whatever, what have you. And then you can just generate. So we're gonna do very vanilla. We always start our games vanilla, generally speaking, especially in our Let's Plays, because I want to see what the base game has to offer, and I want you guys to see what the base game has to offer. So we're going to generate that. Okay, here we are. We have landed on our planet. So let's talk about some basics. First off, WASD to move. Pretty straightforward. Nothing new there. E opens your inventory. Uh, we're just going to talk about the very, very basic ones first here. So E opens your inventory. T opens your research. And let's talk about what we start off with inventory to get going. Okay, so first off, there's your little dude. He looks like he's really well equipped. Uh, he's, I'm sure he's got that uh, bathroom buddy on his back there somewhere. But... <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, so you can't actually see the tool, but this tool you can build just about anything, just maybe not as fast as some of the machines that you can build. Okay, so you also start with a pistol. It has range 15. Uh, every step, I think, is, is a block, so 15 of those blocks, so range 15, so it's about here. You cannot accidentally fire your weapon unless you have a target. Now, some 
weapons later on, like the shotgun, you can actually fire at objects, such as this rock, to clear it. But I can't actually do that with the pistol, so you can't actually shoot off any of that precious ammunition. You start off with 10 clips of ammunition, which is okay, I guess. Um, uh, you're not going to be going and attacking aliens at the beginning anyway. Not on purpose, anyway. They might come and attack you, but you're not going to be attacking them because that's absolutely ridiculous. You just wouldn't want to do that because you have no armor, you have no good guns, you're just... You're completely naked out here, essentially. You also, fortunately, and thank goodness, you start with one burner mining drill, which you can use to harvest resources that are on the ground, such as this copper. And you start with one stone furnace, which you can use to turn things like copper into copper plates and iron into steel plates. Very, very handy. Also, if we open up our inventory, we have eight iron plates on us. So, everything else in this game, we have to build. So we were sent all by ourselves with a really fancy, super schmancy bathroom buddy tool, a couple things that we can build, a gun, some ammo, and a few iron plates, that's it. The rest we have, oh, it's already getting dark. It is, this game can be kind of hard to see when it's dark, so I will try to adjust the gamma while I'm uh, doing my editing to maybe make that a little bit easier for you guys. Now, <laughs> uh, so research, let's talk about research. Okay, so the goal of the game, the grand goal of the game, at least as it stands right now, because this is still an uh, alpha, I guess, beta, I don't know, it's still relatively early in the development, even though it is really well put together. The goal of the game is to build this little baby here. It's called the rocket defense. You use this to help defend the colonist ships as they land. I don't understand if they're, we're shooting something in the sky or we're shooting on the ground. I don't know if it's aliens or what the deal is, but the goal is to do all, when all of this stuff here is all research that we have to do. And, and, and then there's subcategories that you can't even see here. So there's, uh, oh, you know, like, so there's, there's laser turret shooting speed one, but then there's turret shooting speed two and turret shooting speed three. So there's a lot of research to do. And each one of these requires a whole bunch of these little research science packs. And there's different levels of these science packs that you have to eventually get up to. And you have to build so many of them in order to perform a certain amount of research and get certain things. It sounds easy, but it is not. There is a lot to do, and it's so fun. The journey, it, this game is all about the journey. Winning, I've never won, by the way. I have never won this game. But uh, uh, winning, to me, in something like this might be a little anticlimactic, but I don't know. Uh, apparently, with some of the uh, stuff that's coming, they're talking about adding a uh, little launching into space and building a little space lab or whatever. That sounds cool. I'm really excited to see what they do with the game. But even as it stands right now, it is worth playing. So you'll notice that we haven't actually done anything with the game. All we've done is talk. So generally speaking, you are safe from being attacked from the aliens so long as you are not doing and producing any pollution and you are not near them. If you are not near any aliens and you're not producing pollution, you can pretty much live out here forever. The aliens will only attack when you're producing pollution. Interesting, right? So there's, there's that, of course, leads to a number of different ways to play the game because you can play in such a way that you try not to offend the aliens. Now, also keep in mind, the aliens do evolve and get more dangerous as time goes on. Actually, it's not time. It's the more you destroy, the more aliens that you attack, the more evolved they become and the more dangerous they become. So, that out of the way, just the basic premise and stuff, let's get started. So, I know you guys are probably sick of me talking, so let's just do it. To start out, you're probably going to want some uh, steel plates. Sorry, sorry, I had a, had a blank here. I'm like, oh, I'm here, now what do I do? Uh, you're going to want some steel plates. So, steel plates are kind of the basis of everything you're going to be building. So, you do have a burner mining drill, which uses coal and actually extracts whatever's on the surface here. You also have the stone furnace, right? So, we're going to need coal to run this, or you can actually use wood to run this as well. But before that, we're going to probably want to gather a little bit of coal to, well, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can grab a couple pieces of coal so that we can run that first burner mining drill, but oh, wow, this takes forever. Look at this little guy hammering away. That multi-tool is no good for digging into the ground. So what do we need to do? We need to actually build ourselves a better tool. So, of course, that's a natural place to start. We're going to start by building ourselves an iron axe. This is the first basic harvesting tool that you get, and look at how much faster that is. So to start out, you're probably going to want, uh, I don't know, 10 to 15 coal, maybe a little bit more later. 
Eventually, of course, we're going to automate this process so that we don't have to sit here and do this. Can you imagine the game entirely like this? You have to harvest like this the whole time. It's like the earlier versions of the uh, RTS Warcraft, the original Warcraft where you're sitting there with your little peons and you're harvesting. Remember? <laughs> uh, that's what it reminds me of. Anyway, so get yourself about 10 to 15 and then we probably will never have to harvest this way coal again, ever. The only other thing we might have to harvest here, well, that we will have to harvest is some stone. So then we can place down our burner mining drill. And this will actually start to bring up all of this valuable iron ore. And if you can see here, it actually tells you how much is in every little stack. So amount 1241. It tells you how long it takes to mine it. The hardness. Um, I don't know. I haven't actually looked at the hardness. I don't know if it's different for different places or not, but I don't know. So with the burner mining drill, we can do one of two things. We can... Let's just grab a little bit of wood. So I'm just gathering some of this wood with that uh, tool that we built for ourselves. And we're going to do something really quick just to show you. Uh, actually, and we're going to throw in, we're going to take five pieces of coal. So I can do it a couple ways. If I hit the left mouse button and I can pick up the stack or I can hold the control button and hit the left mouse button and that'll bring, put the whole thing in there. I don't actually want to do it, but now it, notice it has one piece of coal. So it's going to keep harvesting until it is done. Now, if I hit the right mouse, button, right mouse button with the control down, it'll put half of what's in my inventory there. Um, you'll notice it has stopped because it has nowhere to put any more iron. So it automatically places one on the ground. So there's a couple things we can do. We could place down a wooden chest. Now the wooden chest will hold more stuff. So now it can just keep putting stuff into this pretty little wooden chest. So the iron will continue to go in here until it runs out of coal. Now, that sounds pretty cool and awesome. However, iron itself in this raw form is really no use for us. We actually want it to be steel plates. And we personally cannot turn iron into steel because we need to have coal combined with iron and it needs to be in a really hot place in order to do that. So in order to do that, um, we are going to remove this pretty little wooden chest and we're actually going to place down a stone furnace right in front. So it's automatically going to put all this iron right into the stone furnace. Isn't that handy, eh? So very, very convenient. See, it's dropping it in there. Now, the stone furnace, of course, uses coal as well, or you can use wood, um, but wood doesn't isn't as good. It's not as good of a fuel value as coal. It's actually half as good, but it's twice as fast to harvest. So I don't know, it's debatable. And boom, there we go. So you got coal going, or sorry, you got, we put, we manually put coal in here and this sucker started bringing up the iron. The iron goes into the stone furnace combines with coal and becomes iron plates. I guess iron plates. I don't know. I guess it's not steel. Sorry, my apologies, because steel actually comes later in the game. So now we can take these steel plates. We can take it by doing this, or we can actually out here, we can hold the control button and left click on the building and it will take those iron plates. If I did this on this building, it's going to take the coal that it has for fuel and we don't want to do that. Now we can put the coal back in a few ways like I showed you. Another na nice way is to actually have it on our handy dandy little toolbar here and we can hold down control and put it right back in. Okay, so that said and done, we are now building iron plates. So we are going to gather those and I apologize if I misclick, I still do it quite often. So now we need to find a way to harvest some of this coal so that we can keep refueling our furnaces here. So we are going to have to build another burner extractor so the burner mining drill so to build that we are going to need a stone furnace which is another one of these that actually this is actually a component of this as well as something that you can use independently we're going to need three iron plates and three iron gear wheels the iron gear wheels are built from iron plates so i don't need to go and manually build the iron wheels separately and then go and and build the the stone furnace and then build the burner mining drill i can't just click on the burner mining drill so long as i have what you see at the bottom there total raw as long as i have five stone and nine steel plates i can build it so i just need to get a little bit of stone i apologize for those of, those of you that are familiar with the game already this first couple the first episode or two might be a little slow for you but it will pick up so we're actually going to mine 10 stone because we want to build a stone uh, another burner mining drill to get stone out and we're going to need the five stone for that. And then we will never have to, we never, ever, 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 ever in this game ever again need to hand mine either one of those ever. Isn't that nice? So now we just grab whatever plates we have. If we want to see what you're building, you can hit the alt key and it will show you what you're building in the units too as well. 
and what's available to be taken. Cool, there we go. So we have enough now to build a burner mining drill. So you just click on that. We're actually gonna build two of them, one to harvest stone and one, of course, for our coal. Now in the in-between time, we're gonna build another wooden chest and we're gonna use a wooden chest to collect those resources from both of those different sources. So we're gonna go like that. And to get her started, we're just gonna take one piece of raw wood and throw it in there and away we go. And we're gonna put down this little wooden chest and it will collect the coal, just like that. Now we are collecting coal until this wooden chest is full, which would take a very, very, very long time, or we run out of fuel, which will happen pretty darn quick. So we're just gonna take the coal that we just got from that and we're gonna throw it back in. So we put in one piece of wood, we got three pieces of coal. If we put in one piece of coal, we'd get six pieces of coal. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna put in, now we're gonna start up our harvesting of stone. We're gonna throw that down and we're gonna put in, I guess we don't need to do all of that, so that's fine. And we're gonna put in, put down a little box to collect the stone. So now we'll go back and we'll collect some more of that coal because we're gonna need that right away to refresh our stone doodad. Um, but I wanted to throw some more coal in there and grab the steel plates. You're getting it. I know you're getting it. You feel it. Okay, so we need to get some more of that coal. And we are going to automate the coal right away, the coal production. So, and I'll show you how that's done. Whoops. I will do that often because I get a little clicky. Uh, somebody was making fun of me on the channel the other day because they got to see whatever programs I run. So I guess, I don't know. I guess that's kind of fun. Okay, so we should have enough. Nope, we just need a little bit more stone, I believe, now. And now we should have enough stone to build another one of the burner mining drills. So if I, if I was playing by myself, of course, there's there's faster ways to go about this, but I'm trying to explain the game too as well. So like I said, I apologize if you're already familiar with the way the game works, but so now here we have an infinite, um, well, I don't want to say infinite, but we have a long-term solution to mining coal already. So this one is extracting coal and putting it into this one. This one is burning coal, extracting coal and putting it into this one. This one is burning coal, extracting coal and putting it into this one. So it will do this until they fill up. And I don't know what the max capacity is of these units, but see, it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. So now to collect the coal, I just go bang, bang, just like that. Isn't that awesome? And I can actually remove this box and go restock our mining drill that's doing stone because we're going to need a couple more, maybe even... S I'll show you here in a sec. We'll grab that. We're probably out of coal here. Oh, yeah, very, very close. And what I'm going to do right away is we're going to put coal on our hotbar and lock it there. So now anytime I pick up coal, it's going to default and appear as number five in my hotbar. I can use five, the, num the number key five to pull that up and put it in my hand, hold down control, and I can restock, right? So I, I actually don't want to put coal in those, but puts it right back into my hand. So now I can go back to our little doodad, which we know is gonna be out of coal, and go bang, done. So, way, way faster. Learning the hotkeys for this game isn't an option, it's mandatory. You really, you need to sit down and learn them, and I still don't know them all. Like, I'm not even close. I'm sure there's gonna be lots of people like, well, why didn't you do that? Well, you know, it's simply because I just don't know them all. Okay, so, we've got, we're producing a fair amount of coal here, but we're gonna need a lot more. And then, all of a sudden, we're gonna be, okay. It's gonna be really weird, it's gonna be funny. So. We are going to build one, two, three, four more burners. And yes, that's gonna produce a lot of pollution. You get some stats here on the right side. It tells you what you're actually making, uh, or sorry, what, what's happening here. So it has health of 100, 100 hit points, whatever that's an arbitrary number. Um, energy consumption, it uses 300 kilowatts, but it's getting the coal for itself. And it's, I don't know, if you, energy's arbitrary here too as well. Pollution, it is producing, producing 10 points of pollution. You can see it floating off. Now, pollution, of course, shows up on your map as that kind of red hue. It's kind of hard to see right now because we haven't exposed the map very much. Now, if this kind of red hue crosses over with alien creatures, the aliens will get, whoops, the aliens will get a little bit upset and might come and visit you. And they generally don't have good things to say when they come there. Okay, so we have the two that are helping each other here. So now what happens if we do, whoops, we're going to do four. Now, all we gotta do is make sure this one is turned, whoops, turn there, and then this one's gonna feed this one, 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 and it goes around, 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 which is awesome, which means we're producing twice the amount of coal. But uh, we're gonna need more of that to start, so we're gonna do six. Look at that, just like that. 
Ha ha! Awesome, eh? So now we're producing lots and lots and lots of coal, and we are going to just simply get our... Oh uh, yeah, see, this This is what's going to happen, right? So, use our 5 key, and bang, there we go. Just like that, just like that. Okay, so we're going to need a lot more iron working, and we're going to need a little bit of copper. So, I usually about, uh, I usually get 4 or 5 of the iron, uh, iron mines going. And I only do one stone, because that's all I need at the beginning. And I do about six, six of these. So this is about the most I'll do before we get electricity. Once we get electricity, we're going to change this up a little bit. But you'll find, uh, by the time we get electricity, this is going to be way too much. It's, it's funny. At least for me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a minimalist, but I'm, I'm crazy minimalist. You know, like, I, I, I do small amounts of certain things, and then weird, strangely high amounts of other things. It doesn't make any sense. So I can't really say that it can be categorized in either way. So let's just see. We've got 17 coal there, 48 there. All right, we're rocking. Okay, and grab the stone here, and away we go. So let's go build our... Uh, let's do, do more, sto more uh, iron here first. Harvest more iron. So let's get... So... We, when you're when you're building these two, so we're going to build some more of these stone furnaces, the same setup here. Um, just keep in mind that stone furnaces are also a part that goes in the burner mining drill. So if I build the stone furnace first, it's sitting in my inventory right here. Now if I build the burner mining drill, it's actually going to use that part to help build the burner mining drill. So you want to build them backwards. So you want to build your burner mining drills, and we want three of those total. And then we're going to build our three stone furnaces after that. Make sense? Okay, and I can use the two key place that down I can rotate it with the R key just like so and actually I am going to do that a little bit differently and on the way Q puts it back in my inventory on the way we're gonna grab this coal and we're gonna actually go I saw these sitting here <laughs> just little stray clumps of iron and they're probably gonna be in my way so the sooner I get rid of these the better um, besides that we need the iron so you know yeehaw Double, double bonus, right? So I'm not going to use my five key this time because I want to be sure that everybody gets a little bit. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go like that. Whoops. Yeah, I guess that's not really what I had in mind. That's okay. <laughs> Didn't really mean to do it that way. That's okay. Uh, grab that. We're going to put that there and we're going to grab that and we're going to put that there and we're going to grab that. So I'm just using the right mouse button to take half parts, and I'm sure there's another way to do this, and I'm sure those of you that play Factorio would love to let me know how it's done. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, now we've got four little doodads working on iron plates, which is fantastic. Now we need at least, and I'm going to move this guy, well, I don't know if I'll move this guy, I'll just let him go for a little bit, and then I'll take him down, because I don't think, I think I'll have automation up for iron before... Uh, before I get to that point anyway, or at least electricity. Okay, so now we're gonna go build, uh, is there any other silly little place? No, let's, let's just go put another doodad right here. So we're gonna go like this, we're gonna build another burner mining drill and another stone furnace, just like that, and we'll place that sucker right here. So copper is, uh, not as necessary or needed at the beginning of the game, but it becomes abso now. See, these are both of these are maxed out because we're producing so much coal, and I'm talking so much in between doing things. <laughs> um, so now I can just go five five. Everything's maxed out. Awesome, perfect. And grab that iron. Go here. Uh, maxed out. Awesome. And grab that stone. Grab that. now. As soon as these fill up to max, they will actually stop operating. So I do have to kind of keep an eye on them because coal is essential at this point in the game, but as so long as, whoops, did not mean to do that. I took the coal from the unit there. No, oh, you have to be close enough to do things too. Um, so as so long as the pollution is not crossing the path of aliens, and we don't even know actually, <laughs> it could be, and we could be in big trouble. Like if there's aliens right here because the wind is going this way, if there's aliens right here, we're going to be in big, 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 big trouble. Uh, and they will come and I have a pistol with a few clips of ammunition and we we're dead. So <laughs> we're going to try and avoid that if at all possible. So now we are producing all of the basic necessities of life in this game. Iron plates, copper plates, and ar arguably stone and coal. Uh, they become less important as the game progresses. Right now they're super, super important, of course. But as the game progresses, uh, both, well, copper becomes even more important and iron becomes even more and more important. Like, 
you just can't get enough of these two items. So I'm just kind of waiting here and then we're going to go grab this last little load and we're going to start working on electricity that quickly. We can get going on electricity that quickly. We're going to build a steam engine, of course, just like uh, Modern Society founded on the backs of a steam engine. And that's where we're headed. So it's it's like we're starting, you start from the industri industrial scratch, right? And that is the steam engine. So let's just see, I think we've got some more room for coal here. Oh, that's it. Whoops. Didn't mean to take his. Okay, awesome. And I think I got the plates. Yeah, there we go. We got 231 plates. So it tells you how many you have every time you take it. And away we go. Oh, we'll take some more coal because we're going to be firing up a steam engine. Uh, where do we want it here? Let's just take a quick look. I'm thinking right in here is probably a great place to put it because there is room for expansion, although I tend I tend to build a lot of uh, solar panels and stuff, so I don't know. I don't even know why. You can just kill the aliens, but they are a bit of a pain. Uh, I, I don't know. I just like to keep them off my back for as long as possible. So to build a steam engine, you need what? You need water, you need coal, and you need a engine, right? So you need a furnace and a, and a steam engine as well as a lot of water. So you need a pump. And you're going to need, well, I, I, I like to put a little, uh, a little space in between the uh, pump and the, the, bur the uh, what are they called? <laughs> Sorry, the boilers? Yes, the boilers. And then I always start with just a few boilers and a few steam engines. So it works out to, m similar to, uh, so for every one boiler, you need two steam engines approximately. Uh, the actual final ratio being... Uh, 10, 14 boilers to 10 steam engines, I think. Something like that, anyway. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure where to... I think I think we do it down here. Yeah, let's do it down here. I, just we got enough room here to do a few of the uh, layouts if we need to, and we probably will in the end, even though I probably will try to go green for a while, thinking, oh, I just want to be a good person and not, you know, pollute the place, but... In the end, you end up doing it anyway. So, so there, that's going to pump water. We're going to attach this little pipe here. It's an underground pipe, so you can, uh, it's actually going underground, as you can see. And we're just going to move it a little ahead. That way, I can still get through. You can use regular pipes, but you can't walk through regular pipes, whereas you can with this. Or I could attach the boilers right to the unit, but uh, that doesn't give me any room to walk through in case something goes wrong. Maybe the power line down or something. I don't know. This way, it just makes it so I can move around a little better. Then we're going to throw down some boilers. And there we go. So they're saying that they're out of fuel, so we can fill those up with coal, but we're not going to do that quite yet. So we put down three boilers. Technically, th it's three boilers for two. I think it's three for two. I think it's three boilers per two steam engines. And the, the final 100% efficiency ratio is 14 to 10. So 14 boilers to 10 steam engines. But three to two is a good start, right? So there we go. We are all set up. We can actually start working on our... Electricity. So what else do we need for electricity? Well, we need some power lines. So, and to build power lines, we are going to need a little bit of wood. So let's, uh, let's see if we have enough to build a few anyway, so we can get that started. And eh, not really enough. Okay, so I guess I'm probably going too fast. So these are the small electric poles. Every time I click, left click, I build two of them. If I right click, I build ten. So right clicking builds five of a unit, but because I build two at a time, it actually builds ten. So see, it build, we built eighteen from nine. So I noticed this uh, this iron down here. We're going to need more wood, uh, which means we're going to have to clear this wood anyway. So I'm going to start working on that. We'll clear some of this wood. Um, so trees do offer a little bit of pollution control. They do absorb some of the CO2 out of the air or some of the pollution out of the air, which will, of course, slow down the bad guys. So I try not to destroy all the woods if I do have woods. And some maps, you just don't have any, have any wood at all. Like, you don't have trees at all. So you've got to deal with the fact that, you know, it's going to be hard to find wood, and there's nothing to control the pollution. So, we're going to take all that wood back up here, and we're going to build a few more of the electric poles. And, actually, let's just do that now. We're running. If you're talented, you can do this. Okay. <laughs> and there we go. We can see it building. It's building some copper wire, and then it builds some, uh, does some wood planks, and then it puts together the, of course, the small electric poles. So the small electric poles, we're, you need to have electric poles on the actual steam engines themselves, which is kind of weird. It'll, the first time you play through, you're not going to know why your, your electricity is not working. So, and now at this point, we can actually, I just, just want to build these poles out. So starting at the first one, just hold down the left mouse button and walk. Bang. Oh, I guess you can't have anything in the way in order for that to work. 
So kind of proved me wrong there. So let's do that again. Okay, at their max distance. So if you do this right, you can walk and place at their max distance, just like so. And I don't think there's any consequence to having a large power grid. In, in other words, having a lot of poles lying around. So yeah, there we go. Just like that, we've got electricity poles all the way down. We're going to grab our coal from here because notice they have stopped working because they're full. And we're going to go restock the coal down here. Now, normally I wouldn't let that go for so long. It's just I'm chatty and I'm trying to teach at the same time. And I, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you guys would like to see a whole series on this because it is really, really, really fun. And I really like playing it. And it's a shame when I'm playing things that I'm not actually sharing with you guys. So I'm hoping that uh, we can all play this together. It'd be super fun. I like to play things on YouTube that I like too as well, right? You know, I don't do it just, just do it for you guys. So if you guys like something as well, it's total bonus for me. Okay, so that's stocked up. We've got some more copper. Awesome. Let's go get our electricity running. And then I think we are going to call this an episode. But let's get this running first. So all we got to do is throw some coal in here. Bang, bang, bang. Just like that. We have thrown a whole schwack load of coal. They can only hold... Oh, wow. Why didn't that one put all of the coal in there? Oh, weird. Okay, I don't know why. But anyway, so 50 coal each. Now nothing's happening because we're not actually using any electricity. If we want to use electricity, we've got to put something down that uses electricity. And let's put down our first lab. So that's generally the first thing you put down because you, you need to start working through this. So you, there, you, there's just so many things you cannot do at the beginning. You need to do a little bit of research. You can theoretically automate everything right from the very, very get-go. And we are going to be doing a heavy amount of automating. But I like to get that first lab down. It gives, while I'm doing these collect, this collecting and, and building and stuff, it gives, that way my lab is doing something. I'm actually doing some research as well while I'm doing all that stuff, all this running around. So there the lab is done. Notice it built a whole bunch of preliminary stuff before that. I'm going to attach the lab just like so. And bang, we can start researching. Now, in order to research, we are going to have to build these little science packs. These science packs are expensive and they take a long time for you personally to build them. So, of course, we're going to have to work on uh, something to allow us to build them automatically. And that first piece is the assembling machine number one. So we're going to research that right away so that we can start assembling the process. So no power. Why is there no power? Oh, because, <laughs> because our power lines are not attached. Oh, bummer. Okay, so there we go. So now we're going to wait. The water is going to heat up to 100 so you can see on the right side, temperature, it's going up. It has to be 100 degrees. And then we will start pumping power through here. And of course, powering units like this. Now, um, we can, we are going to be manually building science packs at the beginning. And they require, if you look there, it says one gear wheel and one copper plate in reverse order, sorry. Um, but all you need, if you're going to manually build them, all you need is two steel plates and one copper plate. And it takes 5.5 seconds per but you have to gear, build the gear. Anyway, it's, it's, it takes a long time if you're building hundreds of them. But we're going to do that at the beginning. And we can just right click and build five at a time. With, and it tells us we can still build, you know, 23 more here. We're going to go. That's, that's a little overboard. We're probably not going to do all of that. We'll probably stop it and do something else. But I just wanted to show you how long that takes. So, for example, this research that we're working on right now, which is automation, will take 10 of those science packs. And that's not very much, but imagine once we start getting into the hundreds, there's no way you would stand here and just build and just build science packs like that. Besides that, eventually, whoops, uh, yeah, eventually you're going to be building uh, not just red ones, but green ones. And then blue ones, wherever they are. And then the other color ones, and it just, and some of them get extremely difficult and you actually cannot build them by hand. So that's why we need the automation. So we're going to build a few of those and then get our lab going. Just like that. Awesome. So that's five in there. There we go. So it's going to eat those up gradually. And every time it hits the end here, it'll eat one up and we get a little tick. There we go. So it's 10 of those to get automation finished off. And if we could get automation finished off for this episode, that would be spectacular. And of course, while that's working, we should be off. Whoops. See, there I go again. You're going to see a lot of my programs, I'm sure. While that's working, we should be off making sure that all of our equipment is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So we're collecting those iron plates, collecting the coal out of here because they stop working when you leave them. But now we're going to start to get an accumulation of coal that is completely unnecessary uh, for us to be carrying around. Like we're already carrying, you know, hundreds of coal. 
Um, even stone, we're not going to want to be carrying all the stone that this thing is going to be able to produce, even from that little tiny spot. Um, the iron plates, really, will take anything it can offer us right now, but eventually that'll be the case too, so we're going to have to have, find places to store all this stuff. So let's go back and finish off automation. I th I'm not sure if we got the plates from here. No, we didn't. We didn't restock coal or anything. Okay, so there we go. We'll go back to our little lab. Trust me, it's going to get really fancy here, guys. I hope you're enjoying the episodes. Or I hope you enjoy the series because I cannot wait to continue on. Okay, just a couple more ticks and we're done. And actually, before we do that, we're going to build a radar system. So, oh, ah, uh, shoot. Okay, so we're just going to, so we're going to cancel all this. Like I said, we we're probably going to have to do and build ourselves a radar system because that is how we're going to... Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, automation is done. That allows us to build the assembling mach machine, which is basically a little factory, and a long-handed inserter. So I'll talk about those probably on the next episode. First off, let's just talk about the radar since I've almost got it done. So that is the easy way or the lazy way to do scout on the map. So it has to, it, it requires power. It tells you how much power it uses too, 300 kilowatts. And if you click on the electric pole, it tells you how much power you're producing, etc. But we'll talk more about that later. So the, this will actually, once it reaches that sector scanning progress right at the top, it will actually open up one little square here. And we'll get to see what's going on without us having to leave the base. It is the lazy man's way of identifying your surroundings. So there you have it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, please let me know if you don't ever want to see this game ever again, ever, ever in your life. Please let me know. <laughs> Although I'll be heartbroken, but that's okay. I don't mind. I'll, hey, I, I love all the other games we play too, but um, if you do like it, let me know. If you don't, please let me know because I, I don't want to be playing something that you guys don't want to watch. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, take care, guys.